Welcome to the 24 UK podcast, uh, here still in Los Angeles, California. Uh, we're joined today by one Mido Hamada, uh, who has a recurring role coming up in season eight of 24. Mido, thanks ever so much for joining us here today. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks Excellent. And uh, we're going to grill you with a few questions on... Uh, on <laughs> you're going uh, to grill me? <laughs> yeah. Nice. About some of your involvement in 24. Oh, and, right. uh, see if we can learn a little bit about you. Absolutely. Great stuff. Uh, so, first of all, tell us a little bit about your background, perhaps, where you've uh, come from before, some of the stuff you've worked on in the past. Give us an idea of, uh, you know, maybe some, something we might have seen you in before. Um, I was born in Egypt uh, many years ago now, and uh, I moved to, uh, moved to England to go to drama school. And then I stayed in England for quite some time, did a lot of theatre in England, uh, and then did a, a mini-series called Path to 9-11 which uh, brought me over to the States. Uh, in the States, I shot a series called State of Mind and uh, done, you know, numerous things on both sides of the Atlantic, so to speak, since then. And uh, now I'm doing 24, which I'm really excited about. And uh, what's your character called in 24? My character's called Samir, and that's as much as I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> No, well, obviously we're a non-spoiler podcast, yeah, so we're yeah, not going to press you for uh, for any more information because we wouldn't want to spoil the uh, spoil the fun, of course. Absolutely. Well, we saw it. Might be wrong. We saw a, a casting call come out on the internet, mm. um, and it said that you, the character, was going to be charismatic and dangerous. Would that yes. be right? Very, very much. So, yes. <laughs> I don't know about the charismatic part, but uh, definitely the dangerous part. Yes. Right. So. Um, if you were dangerous, we're guessing you might be working with weapons and combat. Mm. Uh, did you do any training, weapons training or combat training of any sort? Uh, I have on other shows, yes, and I have on this show as well. So uh, any time, what's good about doing shows like this is any time that you handle a, a weapon, they immediately send you out to train with some you know, very special forces people or people right. who are really, really you know, gun knowledgeable, and, and I've, I've had the opportunity to work on a few of those things, and, and um, the training kind of overlaps that you do, so it's uh, it's really good, because each time you handle different weapons, which is really nice, so, uh, yes, I have. Are you a good shot? Training. Am I a good shot? <clears throat> well, they never actually let you shoot on anything, so you can't really tell whether you're a good shot or not, because you're shooting blanks. So it's all about how you hold it, I guess. It's all about how you look while you hold yeah. it, I think that's, uh, that's the best way to put it. Like you were born holding a gun kind of thing. That kind of thing, like I woke up in the morning and it's just (laughs) part of my arm. Um, We're going to put our necks on the line here and suggest that perhaps you're a bad guy. Wow, uh, (laughs) Wow, that is going out on the limb. (laughs) Well, the question is though, do do you enjoy playing bad guys? Is that, do you like playing good guys, bad guys, or a little bit of both? Um, To to be honest, uh, I am like, probably any other actor you, you want to play at all and, and so you know they always say you have more fun playing the villains um, I don't think that's necessarily true I think playing good guys is just as much fun and um, I haven't really played a villain until I came at and, and did it on, on this show so for me this was a very new experience and one that I thoroughly enjoyed because it just gives you license to do different things and, and to experience um, different aspects of your own psyche which you might not even know you had. And so uh, that's really cool. Are you saying you needed counselling or something? <laughs> it's just how you two are sitting on a couch and I'm sitting on a chair. What are you talking about? This pretty much is counselling, is it not? <laughs> it seems that way, doesn't it? Um, so was this part something you had to audition for? Um, you know, it, it was really funny because I had uh, met Joe Surinow um, several years ago. Uh, they were thinking about writing a part for me this was, I think, from 2005, 2006, and um, there were just scheduling conflicts and things like that. I couldn't, I couldn't come over and do the show at the time, and uh, so then I did another show called State of Mind, and then I was already in LA, and um, so I met the, the the new kind of group of producers uh, because it's kind of changed over and there's new people in there yeah. now. And because they hadn't met me, and, and uh, I met them at the beginning of the summer of uh, the year just passed, uh, two nine, and.
gone up for a different role, auditioned for a different part in this season, and um, didn't get that particular part. And went back to uh, the UK to resume, you know, I was supposed to do some theatre over there. And uh, as, literally, as soon as I got back to the UK, I got a call and they offered me this part. And right. so I didn't have to audition for this part because they'd already seen me audition for another part, yeah. and they uh, flat out just offered me this one. So uh, that's how I came about to to be on this part. Were you already a fan of the show? Did you watch 24 before? Do you know what? I watched the first season and I thought it was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen on TV. Uh, it literally, I think like many people who watched it the first time, it really blew me away. I, I was like a fan of any other show. I, I just couldn't stop watching. And so I think I did 12 hours in two days. I mean, two days and finished the 24. That's pretty that. impressive. Yeah, I just got hooked, and I did the same thing with the second season, and then I, I think I watched most of the third season, but it kind of teared off the because of that, that because of that, but um, definitely the first two two seasons, I I really, I was just struck about how good the show was, and, and I was, uh, it's a huge fan. I really thought it's the best thing I'd seen for a long time. It's a great format to it, isn't it? Well, it's very innovative. I mean, you know, the split screen and doing all that kind of stuff and, and having a format of having something happen within a 24-hour span and having to be part of those 24 hours and everything happening in real time. Uh, just the tension and, and the urgency, you know, and Kiefer has an amazing way of, of playing that urgency, of really conveying to the audience the, the drama mm. of the moment and how dangerous the situation really is and you really it's in an edge of the seat ride that you're on with him and, and um, he's phenomenal in, in portraying that and making you realize you know this is you know anything can hit the fan any minute yeah. <laughs> so did you get to work with uh, it might be a bit of a spoiler but did you get to meet Keith or work with him I can't really say that okay did you meet him on set uh, yes is he is he a nice man absolutely yeah. absolutely so, what's going to make season eight great, as opposed to we've well, seen one, two, and three? Yeah, um, I think it's different uh, because obviously, you know, President Hassan is there and uh, played by a wonderful Anil Kapoor. Yeah. So, uh, I think it's usually you know in the previous season the Middle East has been there somewhere and and, and it's happening all over here. And now the Middle East has kind of been mm -hmm. brought over into uh, the United States, and, and so now it's all happening over here. And I think that's what's um, what's different to other seasons. That's uh, the immediacy of where it's happening. It, sure. it, it will be, you know, in a different place, and, and I think that's what makes it special. Um, and I'm on it, so that's special. <laughs> <laughs> so have you been watching the first few episodes of Ed? Uh, I've watched, yeah, I have a tendency not to watch my own work, so I usually watch everything up to when I start to come in, and, then, and that's when I stop. So yeah. I haven't seen them so far, and I think, I think uh, I'm really impressed. Uh, but I kind of knew that anyway because I was on it. So I was very impressed with the um, with the structure of it, with the tightness of it, and, and how it looked, and how it felt, and the intensity. You know? And that's what you look at 24. Yeah. Does it have that kind of intensity? Is it driving through things? It really is, so I'm enjoying it.